Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, as you guys can see from the title, I am starting this new thing. I felt like it was a really good idea because I've been getting a lot of questions on people asking me how to price their nails and then a lot of people are, have been asking me how I grew my Instagram and that they want to be on my level and a bunch of things like I just get so many comments and I feel like I want to help you guys more so as you guys can see like I mentioned from the thumbnail we are going to be doing today press on nails 101 and this episode is going to be on pricing and the importance of social social media so basically social media is the first part because it plays the biggest role and then pricing comes afterwards so I'm going to explain today how that's important and then I'm going to start out actually by telling you guys a little bit of my background and how I kind of started this whole entire thing um and how I got to where I'm at a little bit and then next episode I was thinking that we could do something like me explaining everything that you need to start doing press-ons and basically all your essential items I kind of did an essentials video already but I'm talking about a little more in depth and then also that will explain uh how I like ship my packages off and stuff and then I'm also going to be talking a little more in depth about the type of people that you may encounter and if this is really for you because this is where you're going to have to start investing into your business both mentally physically in your personal life everything giving it your all so that's kind of the, like part two that I'm going to be talking about um you guys can see in the video I'm actually like moving my hands and stuff I filmed this video in real time but I felt like I could explain so much better now like right now in this moment I did film this earlier like a few hours ago and I think I was like hungry and stuff like while I was filming so I didn't even film correctly plus I was working on the set at the same time so I did want to tell you guys really quickly I am working on a set right here I'm going to show you guys the one we're working on I'm just zooming in for you guys a little bit right here but we're just going to be doing a set for one of my customers she ordered a medium square black french tip set I'm going to show you guys and it's a really simple set to do but I just wanted to do something so that you guys can have something to watch while I talk just in case you guys are like actually watching the video but definitely grab a snack for this one it's going to be a long video and a very chatty one I know you guys love my chatty videos and it really means so much to me like when you guys tell me that you like when I talk um but yeah so we're gonna jump right into it I just wanted to give you guys like an introduction to what we're doing today and it, this is something very different but we are starting out with the medium square email couture tips and I am gonna have everything that I'm using in the description so in case you guys have any questions about that so I'm gonna start off for those of you that haven't already watched like most of my videos I think most of my Q&A videos kind of explain this but I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit now about my background so I did start out um, when I start, first started doing nails, I was actually working on regular 9 to 5, you guys. This is going to be a very real video and I'm going to just explain everything to you guys like thoroughly. Just like literally like I, I'm talking to one of my friends, like if I'm talking to a, a new friend that I just met or something like that. So I want you guys to get super comfortable and stuff, but... I was working at Home Depot as a customer service representative, like just like returns and stuff like that. And I was... um just working a regular nine to five I was in community college and I started before I actually did that I started doing my own nails because the nail salons were just too expensive I was paying like $90 my boyfriend would pay for me and it was like crazy and the, they were like at regular chop shops like they wouldn't even do that good of a job like really bad and I started wanting to do it because I literally you guys ever since I can remember like since I was young I would literally put regular polish on my nails and dip my nails into like craft glitter because I wanted my nails to be sparkly I vividly remember that like that is a moment in my life I will always remember and I think at that time I was probably like 11 or 12 years old so it's just crazy like how things happen but anyways I was working like that like I mentioned and I realized that I really wanted to start doing nails and I was wanting to take it very very seriously so I did start doing that and um I actually was doing it on my on myself and my co-workers were the ones that would let me practice on them uh one of my friends let me do it too but my co-workers were the ones that really made like let me practice and I was just like oh my gosh like I freaking suck at doing nails like I was good at doing them on myself but not on other people but I knew for sure that I loved like the design aspect of it I loved that I could decorate like literally however I wanted but you guys I'm talking about like this was when I had like a few regular gel polishes and I had like no barely any acrylic powders I think I had like just like a clear and some random glam and glitz one if you guys know glam and glitz like nobody even uses that anymore really 
but um, I would just go to the nail supply store and get regular nail polishes because they were the cheapest thing and I would just do my own nails and stuff. I was mainly good at encapsulating in the beginning because you didn't need like gel polishes and I thought like gel polishes were really expensive. So I was just doing my coworkers' nails. They were always letting me encapsulate with glitter and little flowers and things. And you guys, I was taking like five hours on a set. I would literally, literally like be like, oh my gosh, thank you for letting me practice on you and stuff like that. So that's kind of just like an overall what happened. And at this time I was working a nine to five, but you guys, I started realizing that I loved, loved, loved nails. Like I loved nails. I would want to be doing nails all the time I wanted to I was thinking about them I was always thinking about my next set I was always thinking about new designs that I could do with the little bit of products that I did have because I always wanted new products and this is when I started looking into it like okay how could I get more nail art that's like really cheap and this was the first time I ever ordered from AliExpress and you guys I'm talking about this was like 2018 so uh 2018 was when I first started I had just graduated high school so I was just like really really thinking like oh my gosh I want to get nail stuff but like I don't have the money for it so you guys if you're in that position don't feel bad because I everybody has been there like literally you have to start from somewhere um and I would literally go to the nail supply shops I would literally go to like the little clearance racks that the nail supply shops had and they would have like little old regular polishes that were never even shaken up for like months and you guys I would get those and I would get the little loose glitters that they would have for like a dollar and like a bucket and you can just choose whatever glitters you wanted I would get that and then like I mentioned I would start ordering from I started ordering from AliExpress to get nail art so that's how I started back then I don't think at this time I even knew about Amazon like I don't know why I just never ordered from Amazon before but back then I feel like there wasn't even a lot of nail art stuff on Amazon for some reason um, that's just what I think. I think that, yeah, I think that's what happened. So I started like that and then, um, I was doing it and then it was like 20, the end of 2019 once I finally started taking like clients, like, so the re way I started taking clients and this is gets me into my next thing of how important social media is. I started posting on Instagram. I created an Instagram for my nails. My name was Slayed by Val. And then I came to the realization that I should put nails in my title, like of my name, so that if one day I wanted to like, you know, create a business card or something, I had nails in the title because Slayed by Val could be anything, you know, you could be a hairstylist, you could be a makeup artist, anything. So I put nails in the front and then I realized like, okay, now I want to make an Instagram. I want to start posting on here, like my nail stuff because I want people to like see my work, you know, and I was always so excited to post it. And once I started posting, I started realizing like, oh my gosh, I love this. And I put like where I was doing nails, where I was located. And I literally just started taking clients. You guys like random people would like DM me. But it mainly started because I, one day I made a Twitter post and it literally got like 20,000 likes of people that are that were in the Bay Area around my city. People that were like, oh yeah, I'll go to you because I explained that I was like just starting out doing nails. I was a beginner and I was only charging $20 for literally whatever you wanted. Um, and yeah, this was crazy because I would take like five hours on a set, but I was only charging $20. And sometimes I would feel so bad because of how long I took. There was multiple people that I didn't charge them at all. I told them to just go for free for even letting me practice on them for that long because I took up like that much of their day. And yeah, that's literally what happened to me, you guys. I would cry and cry and cry like literally, um, literally I could even ask my boyfriend, huh, babe? He's literally right here. <laughs> huh? I used to cry like when I didn't like my work wasn't good and like I would look up to people and stuff. Time. yeah see you guys like he was literally always there for me um it's like crazy because I never thought that I would get to where I'm at now like you guys I remember one day I struggled so bad for an, with an ombre like an ombre set on somebody and I was crying literally all day because I was like why is it so hard like how do people make it look so easy like I really want to do this I love this I love doing this but I don't think I'm going to be able to get to where I can like do this on people because like they do you guys the girls would literally get mad at me like people would be like there's no way like you could take this long like people would tell me that in person like to my face they'd be like you're taking too long like this is I can't be here this long you should have let me know or like things like that like really rude so um it really sucked and thank god like low-key this is like a good thing um 
because of when 2020 started, you guys know what happened in 2020. It was a freaking disaster, but this was okay, a good thing because this gave me some time to stop taking clients. So every, we were on lockdown, whatever. And then I was finally able to kind of like rethink, regroup. I wasn't able to take people. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try to practice as much as I can. But the problem is I can only do so many acrylic sets on myself. And, you know, obviously I can't make money from that. I wasn't working anymore. So I was like, okay, I want to start doing press on nails. Like I was just starting to look into it. I was like, how can I make nails that I can just ship off? So I literally did all the research on my own. I was like, let me look up how I can do this. Like, how can I do it so I can make nails? I started making nails, you guys. I just started on some little McCart nail tips. I didn't know anything about the sizing or anything. Like, literally the sizing was the most confusing thing for me in the beginning. Um, and I know I that's like the next qu most asked question I get actually is like about the sizing. But, um... I'll talk to I'll talk about that maybe in the next video and I was like okay I need to figure this out so I started doing press on nails you guys and I was not good in the beginning so if you guys compare yourself to me or to anybody do not compare yourself and do not feel bad about your work because I was literally there everybody was there and at like at one point so I'm literally on my Instagram I'm trying to find old pictures of my work but I don't think I can find any I don't know I've got like a new phone since then so I'm not sure if I could find them but whatever I can find in my archives I will definitely pull them out and show you guys wait till the end of the video I'm gonna pull out all my old pictures of my press-ons and how they used to look and everything like that so um so sorry guys my dog so yeah I was just doing that and then um once I really wanted started wanting to get serious was during 2020 that's when i started posting on instagram literally as often as i could i started making cuticle oils i started making sure that i was posting literally every day almost so that's what really jump started everything you guys consistency is key on your instagram you guys need to make sure that you are literally posting multiple times a day i know it can be hard if you're working a nine to five try to post in the morning when you wake up try to post on your breaks like and if you guys have a day off and you have a little, a few extra hours, create some sets. Even if they're simple, create some sets with some designs that are more trendier than, you know, like what, like, you know, what, you know what I mean? Like maybe add some stones or if you like painting, hand painting stuff, add some hand painted designs, whatever your niche is, whatever it is that you like to do, do that on a few nails, a few sets of nails. And then, um, make sure you have posts save saved for throughout the week if you're working you know what I mean like try to manage your time a little bit um that's what I would do when I was working so I would recommend that and basically just trying your best to post that's the most important thing because that brings us into the next thing which is clientele if you have a lot of posts you guys trust me you're going to gain a following I have done nothing on my Instagram nothing at all but post as often as I possibly can and that is literally how I have the followers that I have. And I don't even care about the followers, you guys. That's not even important. The only thing that's important is they give me clientele. They give me their business. They give me their support, their likes, everything. And it just all adds up to everything in the end. So because they like my work, they buy nails for me. I have consistent customers that come back and back and back over and over. They have Some of them have been coming to me since the very beginning, all because they found me on Instagram, which is absolutely crazy. Like these are people I've never met in person and they have been buying from me. They have been buying nails for me since like 2020 and we are in 2023. So that is absolutely crazy. Like, like, I can't believe it. And you guys, to this day, I literally give those people that have been with me for years, I give them random free sets all the time. I make them in their size and send it in their packages and they don't even know I'm sending it. So I always do that as a little appreciation for them because they have really stuck by me. Like, they have seen my growth. They have been in my press-on. Like, they have been wearing my press-on since I first started. So that is, like, literally crazy. Um, But I just wanted to say that. And, um... Yeah, so that's kind of how I started and the like I mentioned the social media is the most important thing because how your Instagram looks how your everything is is so important you guys you can create a little logo on Canva Canva is super easy to use and 
it's free. You can, there is some stuff that you have to pay for, like little, like, I don't know, like little stickers and stuff, but you don't need all that. You can make it completely free and you guys, it's so worth it. Trust me. You can create a logo. You can do all of that. If, if, if this is something you have been planning on doing, like, let's say you've already been doing your own press-ons on your own hands for like a year or two years and you've never thought about selling them but you're you feel like you're good enough to sell them you guys try it out you never know what if it's something that you really like um and if you already like making the nails this can be literally either a side hustle apart from your job that you already have or this can be a full-time job this is all i do is all i only do nails so that's uh you know saying a lot and um yeah so depending on how how much you feel like your work is worth is how much you should charge so for example like i will look at a set like for example this black french tip set i'm making you guys saw the picture i will look at a set like that and be like okay factoring in the price of shipping factoring in the application kit materials the box it the box the nail tips that i use and the gel polishes that i use and everything like that i would look at that set if someone with somebody that has like a decent amount of following, they have, uh, you know, a lot of people are wanting their work, stuff like that. I would say this set is worth around 40 to $45. I feel like that's fair because think about it. You go to a nail salon, a plain French tip set now here where I live in California, eight, probably like $70 minimum. And I'm not even joking because I used to pay 90 for like a plain set with just like glitter on it so i don't even doubt it and that was years ago when i would pay that much so i don't even know how much it is now i haven't been to a nail salon in literally probably since i was like i think since i was 17 you guys i have not been to a nail salon so yeah that's crazy um i don't know how much they're caught they're charging now but that's why i'm saying like i feel like 45 would be fair because i from that take home you'll probably be only be getting like what 35 maybe 35 so 40 40 dollars for something like this is very fair and that's just saying like charging what i think i'm worth you know what i mean um obviously like when i first started doing press-ons i was not charging that much i was probably charging 20 to 30 dollars literally and that was for like work with like glitter rhinestones art a lot of art like super extra nails i was charging like 20 to 30 so that kind of just says a little bit as well um and that was one i probably had I pro at that time i probably had like my estimate is maybe like 2000 followers but i was also not advanced like i didn't know how to do french tips back then i didn't know how to do anything i would charge yeah like probably 20 to 30 uh depending on what the design was so um, if you guys are tr thinking about how to charge, I don't know you guys like how to give you an exact breakdown because I don't know. I don't charge like per stone or per French tip nail or anything like that. I just look at a set and I'm like, okay, I think this set is worth mm, $50, maybe 55 that's literally what I do. And I'm being 1000% honest with you guys. That's all I do when I look at the set. But I also factor in how long is it going to take me. If it is a set that has a different hand painted design on every single nail. And they're like different colors where you have to like clean your brush in between every color. You know what I mean? Like those type of sets. Those I always charge more for. If it's an ombre set, I always charge more. If it's a... Uh, like an airbrush set I charge a little bit more because I have to clean the airbrush and everything like that it's like frustrating you know but it takes longer that's the problem time is everything you guys time is literally everything if a set takes you four hours you guys need to charge for that you know what I mean and I don't mean like one french tip set taking you four hours I mean like if it's hand painted or if it has a lot of stones and you have to hand place every stone make sure you guys are charging for that I did want to say something really quickly. I am a very quiet follower, a very quiet person. Like, I will never ever go and comment on somebody's videos, pictures, anything, or DM them or anything. But there are times where I see people that I follow that are very talented. Their work is so good. And they're charging, like, $30 for their sets. And I'm like, that is insane. Like, I don't know. I don't know if they... 
I don't know how they, like, they probably only make, like, $20 for themselves, which is crazy because I know those sets are taking more than an hour because I do those sets, too, and I try to do it as efficiently as possible, and they, every single one of my sets almost takes an hour or more, so that's what's crazy is, like, you guys definitely charge what you're worth. Um, another thing I wanted to say is if you guys are trying to grow your Instagram, like I mentioned, please be consistent. That is the number one thing. If you're not consistent with your posting, you're not going to get any type of people because they're going to either one, think you're not consistent and you're not like actually serious about it. Two, they're going to think like, oh, this isn't like a legitimate, legitimate person trying to like do this. Or they're going to be like, oh, I'm not sure if like, I don't know how to explain it. Like you know, put your, put your guys, put you, sorry, I don't know how to talk. Put yourselves in your customer's position. If you see someone with an Instagram, let's say you want to order some lashes or you want to order, I don't know, some crocheted, I don't know, blanket or something like, I don't know what people order or some handmade jewelry and you go to an Instagram and they only have like two, three posts and they don't post a lot. They, the last time they posted was like a month ago, two months ago. And you want to order something from them, but then you're like, uh, are they even still doing it? You're just going to move on and go to the next Instagram that's actually active all the time that just posted a story five minutes ago, 20 minutes ago, the same day, or they just posted a reel or a picture of their work like a day ago. You're going to rather order from that person because I don't know why, but it's just more appealing. Trust me, you guys, this works like a charm you guys need to be consistent with posting literally post anything you guys post a quote post anything but post it post something that has, is related to your work you know what i mean and um also in your bio you know put things in your bio make sure you guys make highlights on instagram right now i know instagram used to be all pictures and i loved when it was like that like literally i loved that but now unfortunately everything is about reels on instagram so make sure you guys are posting reels it could literally be just two to three second clips of your work put a sound over it like a song and it will make the biggest difference so you guys definitely just need to keep doing that uh the reels actually help following help you get a following faster i noticed that my instagram started growing more once i started posting reels consistently and now i post as many reels as i can one thing I'm going to tell you guys is the only time I don't post reels, like there, there's times where I won't post for like a week. That's how you guys know I'm like depressed, like literally, or that I'm wanting to like give up on like everything because when I'm not posting, that's definitely like a sign that something's going on either like in my personal life or something like that. Um, which is crazy, but like you guys can definitely tell when I'm like not feeling it. Uh, and I just literally will abandon my Instagram for a whole entire week, two weeks, sometimes even. And I, you guys seen, like, you guys see this, like, sometimes I don't post on YouTube for a while too. And that's the reason why is when I get into a funk and I don't want to do anything, I just feel like, oh, like, so, like, I don't know, you guys, you guys know what I mean. Like, I just get basically depressed. So, um, yeah, I wanted to say that that's how my Instagram grew. I didn't do anything. These are all natural followers. All these people message me like every single day. Um, They like my work. They comment on it. Even my followers that are just silent followers, they like watch my videos at least, which means a lot. So yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, And I don't know, you guys, that's pretty much like what I wanted to say. It's like, that's the most important thing. And I don't price like specifically for every single thing, which I probably should. But like I mentioned in the next video, I'm going to explain what you guys need to start. And then we'll kind of go base back to pricing. You know what I mean? So we'll like factor in the cost of how much it would cost for each person that orders a set to get like all the materials. You know what I mean? So we'll definitely be doing that. But I'm not good at math, you guys, and I'm not, like, a real, blank, like, good business person. So I'm not, like, super professional with all that. I know there's, like, you should definitely be, like, calculating and budgeting everything and making sure you're, like, making profit and all that. But I don't do that. Um, I know I'm making profit just off the top of my head because I can just feel it. You know what I mean? You can just tell. So I'm just gonna explain that more in the next video when I show you guys what things I buy. Um, like... For example, my press-on boxes are, I get them as 100 pieces, I believe, and they're only about, like, $52. So, what is that, like, 
I don't know, you guys. I'm literally not good at math. Is that 50 cents a box or is that wrong? Uh, oh, God, you guys. I don't even know. I don't know. We'll do all the math in the next, in the part two. But, yeah. I just wanted to, like, be super real with you guys and talk to you about that. And if you guys ever have any questions, like literally any at all, I literally want you guys to comment down below and ask and don't be scared to ask because what sucked the most, this is like another thing I wanted to say, when I was starting out with press ons with anything, you guys, I would leave comments on people's stuff and ask them like, oh, where did you get this or where did you do that? And they would literally never answer me. They would leave me on red. People would open my messages and not answer, like stuff like that. And you guys know I share everything with you, whether it be my favorite gel polishes, my favorite glitters, anything, I always share it with you guys in my videos. You guys know this, like, I will never gatekeep, so um, I always let you guys know what I use and everything like that because I know how it feels to have someone ignore you when you're actually trying, you genuinely don't know where to go. That's how I felt. Um, but... It's crazy because you guys don't have to be like super nervous. You guys don't need to have all the fancy nail art stuff. I know you guys probably watch people on YouTube or TikTok that have so much nail art and don't feel like you need to start with that because I had nothing, you guys. I had like a little tiny shelf that I got from probably like Facebook Marketplace or something and it was carrying like just like 20 to 30 regular gel polishes and I got them from random places. I remember the first time I ever bought my first real gel polishes um, was when I went on this random re website and they were selling D&D duos, the D&D duos, for $5 a d each pack. And I got like a few of those. And that was my first ever gel polishes that I ever got. But before that, I was literally only using like a Mia Secret acrylic powder I was using like a little random brush and I was using only re regular gel polishes that I would get at either the nail supply store you guys sometimes I would even go to like the flea market or something and I would get them there too because I was just doing nails on myself so I didn't care like what polishes I was getting and I would just literally get any random polishes that I could find and I would have so much fun going to different places and trying to find things that I can use for nails that were affordable so I literally just started there and I actually kind of wanted I wanted to wait till the end to show you guys all my old photos but I'm going to show you now so that you guys can see and I can talk to you about it and we could just reminisce on the old days and just in case you guys haven't seen like where I started so I'm going to put them here and we'll talk about them so this was the first ever press on set that I made literally ever this was my first set March 19th of 2020 my first press ons and before this I was already doing acrylics for a little bit so I was kind of already used to like holding a brush and everything and here is literally the worst one you guys this was my first ever acrylic set that I did on somebody else first one first time ever working on a different person other than myself and I was literally like oh my gosh this is this is like so much harder than I thought it was gonna be and you guys literally this is crazy next set right here this was the first time I ever had to do like a v-tip and then some foils and you guys can see here in the comment I think I put these are so beautiful my very first time trying to do v french with gel polish they look so simple but they were so hard I love a good challenge and this was April 2nd of 2020 now we're in 2023 v tips are so simple and I'm teaching you guys how to do them simple so that you guys don't struggle like I did um those v-tips i remember you guys oh my gosh it took me like three hours to do that the reason why it took me so long was because i couldn't get the line straight for the life of me and what i know now is you need a long brush you cannot use a small little brush for that because any little movement any little shake that you do it's going to show right in your line and you're not going to have a straight line. I tell you guys this all the time, but I love teaching you guys new things in case you guys are beginning because I know what it feels like to begin and I never forget that because I'm a very emotional person and I literally would cry because I couldn't get things done, but I would always try, try my best. Like even to this day, you guys, if there's a design that I feel like I can't do, 99% of the time I will be like I'm going to try and I will tell like the customer yeah I'll do it and then if I always tell them if for some reason I can't 
like I'm gonna try but if for some reason I can't I am going to I'll just refund you you know what I mean but I always try and like I said 99% of the time I try it and then 99% of the time I am able to accomplish it so always try design even if you're scared of it even if you don't feel like doing it just try it out because it can either help you grow or you know make you better um that's like one of my favorite sayings when like if you say it like if you think about it you're not gonna grow if you stay in the same place like you're not going to grow if you're too if you stay where you're comfortable you know what i mean uh you got to take a risk you got to take that extra step the extra leap and then you're definitely going to get to where you want to be so um i kind of just wanted this to be like a motivational video for you guys to kind of showing you guys where i how i started and it kind of explaining to you guys what you guys always ask me about which is the social media thing and then everything like that i think i might even have an extra picture a picture of when i had um like only a little bit of followers and I was like so like oh my gosh I was so like happy about it um I'm gonna try to see if I can find that one next but I would love to show you guys and so that you guys could see like how much it meant to me back then oh my gosh you guys this is crazy this is literally I wonder wait what day was this picture this was April 13th of 2019 so that's to give you guys a date of when I actually first started um doing oh wait hold on you guys let me add this in so this was the first time I ever made my Instagram I had three posts three followers look you guys can see here this was my that was my original my old name and this was literally my first time ever posting on my nail Instagram ever. I started out by posting three pictures, you guys. I told you I was already starting off consistently. Um, and I just literally grew from there. Like, literally just grew and grew and grew. And I just always, I would always see my, po my followers go up and I would just screenshot it. So I have, like, so many different milestones. I think I have one of when I hit, like, 500. And then I think I have one of when I hit 1,000 and just like that. So I would always just like be so excited about that because I couldn't believe people liked following me. Like people liked my work and now it still mind blows. It's still mind blowing to me to this day. Like I, I say this all the time and I said it on my Instagram. I see myself and what I do is so ins insignificant and I feel like I need to give myself more credit because a lot of people love what I do. You guys love what I do and you guys always support me and you guys are literally what keeps me going. And that's not even a lie. That's like literally the truth. Um, but yeah, you guys, like, oh my gosh, I don't even know, but I don't know what else to say in this video. I feel like that's pretty much it, but I did want to kind of do this thing, so showing what, how we started and where we are at now. So I started like this, and this was actually posted um, literally in 2020 in April, and then look at this one now this is where we are at now today which is literally 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 crazy like blows my mind this is how i started my press on account this was literally the day that i started or like uh, the week that i started i think uh this is how it looked and then this is us now so it's literally crazy looking back reminiscing on how things used to be and i just wanted to give you guys a little bit of my story so that you guys don't feel like you're alone and also give you guys some tips like i mentioned earlier um i hope i'm not like repeating myself too much in this video and i hope you guys like these kind of like talkative kind of like friend closer videos um i can definitely do more of these of course i do have a tutorial for you guys coming anyway but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please will leave a like please comment and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video bye i know you told your friend you're not okay Tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way and Guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray As you fade away, as you fade away
yeah, I'm about to fade away. Cause every time I wake up, I feel like it's Monday. Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain. All of a sudden, I don't look at anything the same way. Gotta build up on my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay? Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way. I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace. I never really asked to be brought into this place. You wanna love me? Well, then, baby, have a taste. All the highs and the lows, no, you'll never be the same. I don't really wanna hurt you, but I can't control the pain. If you're sticking by my side, maybe we could be okay. Okay, okay, maybe you could be the change I need today. I promise that I've never felt this way. I really hope that you will choose to stay through all the pain. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray. As you fade away. Yeah.